Welcome back to Luke and Ashley. Today we're doing a different kind of freezer mealing. A freezer meal, but baby style. With Asa, we're doing baby led weaning, which means we skipped the purees and we went straight to solid foods. So we're gonna show you how we make some foods baby safe and also have Asa here eating to show you an example of baby led weaning and one of the meals that I'll give him. And just to give you an idea, it's really messy, but he absolutely loves it. Let's get freezer mealing. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Go. Today for Asa's lunch, he's going to have some carrots that I've already got prepped. So I just pulled these out of the freezer and then heated them in the microwave for a little bit. For his protein, he's going to have some ricotta cheese. He loves this stuff. When I give him any kind of cheese or yogurt, I do like to mix it with a little bit of prunes just to aid with digestion. And the prunes are really sweet, so it's just going to make the cheese a little bit sweeter. And then he's also gonna have a banana, which I'm just gonna cut in half, and then I'll cut it again, and then cut it into strips. And take it out of the peel. And I always just start out with two of them, but he loves banana, so I'll probably give him more. And I have given him a spoon before for the ricotta, and I usually do, but lately he's just been loving using his hands and completely ignores the spoon, so I figured this time I'll just let him get messy. Today we're mostly prepping vegetables and that's typically all I have in the freezer because when it comes to fruits, except for apples, I'll just serve them fresh. So like a banana, I'll give that to him fresh, <laughs> which he loves. Or blueberries, I'll mush those up. Or strawberries, cut them up into strips. So those kinds of things I don't typically freeze, but I do like to freeze vegetables and then starchy things like potatoes for him. So we'll start out with the things that are gonna go in the oven, which is going to be our yellow squash, our zucchini, we've got a pumpkin, and potatoes. I also have already prepped some sweet potatoes, so I just had those bake in the oven for a little while, and then I'll show you how I'm going to slice them up, and also how I'm going to prep them with some other foods so that he's getting different nutrients as well. Like I said earlier, I'm not a professional at all. I am just a mom doing my best and learning as I go. So I'm gonna show you what we've been doing and what I've seen in some research and other videos of how to prep foods. So for our zucchini, we're gonna cut off the end. And the rule of thumb for baby led weaning is to make the food the size of your pinky finger and kind of the same width as well because the wider and longer the better, then they can actually pick it up because as you see, he grabs everything just whole hand. He doesn't really have that tiny grasp yet. So he's gonna wanna pick it up and then bring it to his mouth like that. So it has to be something long where he can actually have part of it sticking out that he can bring it to his mouth and eat it. So that's why the bananas were cut in such long strips and the same thing with the carrots. So I'm gonna cut this zucchini into thirds and I am going to remove the skin, but typically it does cook up where it's soft enough, but this time I'm gonna remove it just to be safe. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut our zucchini into quarters. So I'm just gonna slice it down and then slice it in half again. So now I've got strips that look like this and these are the perfect size for him to be able to pick up and then bring it to his mouth and still have the part that is sticking out for him to actually get into his mouth. And these are all going to be prepped in the oven. So we will talk about that in just a second and the oven is preheating right now to 350 degrees. All right, there's our zucchini. Now let's do the same for our squash. So I'm cutting off the ends. I'm gonna peel it. And none of these peels will go to waste. I put them in a bag in the freezer and then I'm actually gonna use them for a vegetable broth. And typically I will sit and eat every time that Asa has a meal, but this time I thought it'd be really fun if you got to see the mess that's made during this time. So I'm cutting our squash into thirds as well and then I'm gonna quarter it. For our squash and zucchini, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl. And we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of pepper, and a splash of cumin. And all of these seasonings are ones that he has had before, and we have tested them out just to make sure he doesn't have any allergies or bad reactions to them. And he doesn't on any of these, so that's why I'm using them. But you can always skip out on these. But we do wanna give these to him because we want him to get used to different kinds of flavors. And those are two seasonings that we use quite a bit of in this house. All right, now with them tossed, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on our baking sheet. And now these will go in the oven. Now we're gonna prep some pumpkin. <laughs> what do you think? 
<laughs> yeah, are you having fun? I'm gonna start by cutting it in half. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scrape out the seeds. Alright, the seeds have been removed. Now let's go ahead and cut it into strips. Now with this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the skin and I'm gonna cut it into thirds. And these are slices like this, so they're pretty thick and they'll also be long enough for him to pick up and be able to eat. Would you like some more? Me. Yes. Yeah, more? <laughs> if it were up to Asa, he would sit here and eat all day long. So here are our pumpkin strips and they're going into our bowl as well. Our pumpkin is all cut up. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to this as well. Into our pumpkin, I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. Then it's gonna go right on our baking sheet. And these will go in the oven as well. But on our baking sheet, I'm also going to add our potatoes. And the way I'm going to prep these is I'm just going to put them in aluminum foil. They are already washed. And then I will go ahead and just bake them and be able to scoop out the insides. And I like to serve him potatoes mixed with cheese so that it's kind of nice and creamy for him, almost like mashed potatoes that we enjoy. Now let's go ahead and prep some apples. So for our apples, I'm actually going to steam these. I found that that's what's best, so I'm gonna start out by peeling them. Yeah, yeah. Our apples are peeled and Asa is finishing up his meal, so we'll get him cleaned up and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But first, let's cut our apples. So I'm just gonna cut them like this first, getting rid of the core. So now I've got a slice like this and I'll just cut this in half. And I found that strips just like this cook up great and they are just enough for him to be able to hold them and bring them to his mouth and still have enough for him to eat it at the top. You ready to get cleaned up? Okay, so for cleanup, what I've found that works best is bringing Asa over by the sink so that I have access to water and can rinse out his rag easily. But I'll... <laughs> Bless you. So typically what I use is just a washable rag and I will, <laughs> I will ask him if he's all done. Hey, Asa, are you all done? There you go. And then I'll wipe his face first and then get his hands and it doesn't come off perfectly. But this is just the first round. Then I'll take his bib and the tray at the same time. Then I'll get all the extra food that's here on the side, if there is any, and this time there was. Then I'll go for his hands and his face again. And I have heard that some people just like to feed their babies naked so that it's easier to clean up. But I found that honestly the best way to feed him is in an outfit like this. So a sleeping uniform that's kind of got him fully covered and is one of these more comfortable materials because it wipes off really easy. He is a super squirmy baby. And so if I try to clean him up, he will freak out. And so I feel like if he's naked and it's gotten all over his body, that's a really hard thing for me to have to have him sit still and try to clean him up. Whereas now I can just take his uniform off and I can clean it when I have time and it's not gonna wiggle. Now I'm gonna go get him changed and we'll get those apples finished up after this. Come on, Sneaker. I've got our pot now and I just put it on high heat. It's got some water in it. And then this is our steaming component for this pot. I'm gonna go ahead and line some apples on here so we're ready when this starts boiling. And then we'll check on our veggies. All right, here are our apples and they are all ready to go when our water starts boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and get those veggies out. And how I'm gonna to test to see if they're done is take a fork and put it into them. And if it goes in nice and easily like it does, then it'll be safe for him to eat because it means that I can mush it between my fingers as well if the fork can go in it super easy because that means that it's nice and soft. I'm gonna go ahead and start our apples. And then I'm also gonna put our pumpkin back in because it's not quite ready yet, along with our potatoes. While we wait on those things to finish up, I'm gonna go ahead and put some chickpeas in our blender 
And I'm going to add some olive oil and a little bit of water and we'll get these blended up. When it comes to proteins for Asa, I'll give him either a dairy-based one, like you saw today with the ricotta cheese, some chickpeas, or I also do give him meats as well. So I'll just boil up some chicken and shred it and feed that to him with some chicken broth, or I'll give him some ground beef. And for the ground beef, sometimes I'll add it into mashed sweet potato or mashed potato, just something else that'll kind of help him to swallow it and be able to pick it up better. So we've got our chickpeas, let's add a little bit of oil and then some water. And I'm gonna go blend this up and check on our apples. All right, so I just pulled one of the apples and cooled it off just with some cold water. And the way I'm testing to see if they're done is I did put a fork into them just to see if it could go in easily. And like I said, then I'll know that it's soft enough, but just to double check, since apples are a little bit more tough, I really wanna make sure that these are done, whereas a squash is naturally pretty soft. I'm gonna go ahead and take it and try to mush it between my fingers. And it mushed really easily, which means that it'll be easy for him to break it up with his gums. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our apples out because they're all done. Here are our apples. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the pumpkin on to steam now. It wasn't quite cooking up right in the oven like it did last time. So I figured let's just scrap that and steam them and make sure that they get soft enough and are actually safe for him to eat. We're starting to get things finished up, which is really exciting. And then we will get to actually putting these into our little baby sized freezer meal containers. I just finished up with our chickpeas, so this is what it looks like, and I took a fork through it just to make sure there weren't any whole chickpeas. And the reason I blended them up is because chickpeas are kind of a choking hazard on their own, since they are so tiny and round, they can get stuck in their throat, so I just make sure to blend them up. So if there are still little chunks in here, that's okay, you can still chew through that because they're pretty soft, but I just didn't want whole chickpeas for him. So when I serve this, I will sometimes serve it just plain, or I'll serve it on top of something, like on top of carrots, but usually, as you saw, he starts mixing everything anyway, so sometimes I'll serve it on its own and it'll end up on top of the carrots or whatever veggie I've given him anyways. So we've got our chickpeas, our apples, and then we're still waiting on that pumpkin to finish up and the potatoes in the oven. Our squash is done, our zucchini is done. I've got some onion that I have already cooked in the oven and I just had it already prepped and saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the blender as well. I was hoping they would come out a little bit softer and enough for me to be able to mush them and for him to be able to break them up with just his gums, but it didn't quite work out the way I wanted. So I'm actually just gonna blend them and then we're gonna mix them in with some of our sweet potato that we bought, making kind of like an oniony sweet potato mash. So there's our onion and I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to make sure they blend up well and I'll go get these blended. All right, so here's our sweet potato. Like I said, I had just baked up some sweet potatoes and so they are already super soft and I figured I could use them for some of this freezer prep. So what's really nice about them is the skin will come off really easily since they're already cooked. So I've got a bowl and I'm gonna take some of it and make it into that oniony sweet potato mash. And I'm also gonna cut some of it up into strips for him actually to be able to pick up as well. I've also done sweet potato just by steaming it and that works great too. Just anything that's gonna get it nice and soft. Our sweet potato is all cut, and now I've got some in here to be able to mash it up. So to our sweet potato mash, I'm actually going to add some spinach. I think this is a great way for him to get greens, and it's kind of hard otherwise to be able to serve them. So this is some chopped spinach I'm gonna add. I also just went ahead and added a little bit of water to this just to make sure it has a nice smooth consistency for him. All right, and now I'm gonna add in our onion and I am gonna save a little bit to the side so we can have onion on its own just so we can kind of get used to the texture. Even though it has been blended up, it still kind of feels like an onion. So I am going to separate some just so we can have that as well. All right, we're all done with that. And our pumpkin just finished up. So here it is, we've got our pumpkin, our sweet potato, our yellow squash and our zucchini all done. Our potatoes are finished up, so I'm just cutting them in half now, and then I'll go ahead and scrape out the inside and we'll put them in this bowl here. Some of the potato I am preparing into pieces for him to be able to self-feed in strips, and then others of it I'm going to go ahead and make mashed, and then like I said, when I serve it to him, I mix it with either some ricotta cheese or some cottage cheese, and then it's kind of like mashed potatoes. One of the goals of baby led weaning, which is serving your child food like this, like we're preparing, is that eventually they'll be able to eat the food right from your plate. 
So if we're having sweet potatoes that night, I can just give him some of those. But this food is really nice to have prepared because right now he's not ready yet to have a ton of seasonings. And if you guys have watched our other videos, you know that we love seasoning our food pretty heavily. So instead of taking some out and preparing it differently while I'm cooking that meal, I will just pull out like, for example, squash or zucchini if that's what we're having that night. So I'll pull this out of the freezer because I know that it's already ready for him specifically with less seasonings. But as he gets used to eating more and more of these foods and self-feeding, I am adding more seasonings and this way hopefully his body will get used to a little more flavor and then I can start feeding him foods straight from our plate. But until then, it is really nice to have these foods on hand to be able to give him something that is safe for him to eat and I know that he's going to enjoy. Okay, so I have some of those potatoes cut into strips and then I've got these here that I'm going to mash and I'm just gonna use a fork for that. All right, so I just added a little bit of water just to make sure they were nice and moist for him, and there we go. Now let's take a look at all that we've prepped. So we have our mashed potato here and our potato strips. Those are good starchy foods for him to be having. Here we have our yellow squash, our zucchini, our pumpkin, and our sweet potato strips. We've got some onion for him, that sweet potato mash with spinach and onion in it, and sometimes I'll add ground beef to this as well. Our apples and our chickpeas. So here's all the food that I will have in the freezer for him. Like I said, things like fruits, like blueberries, bananas, even things like avocados, I'll just keep those fresh, slice them up for him, and serve them with one of these things. I also like to make him oatmeal and eggs and banana oat cakes, which are just peanut butter, banana, and oatmeal, and they're baked, and then I crumble those up over some yogurt for him. So those are just some breakfast options where I typically don't serve him these foods for breakfast meals. Now let's get these packaged up. So here are our baby freezer meal containers and we've got a little lid for them. This is one kind that I have and then I also have this kind. So in here, I usually like to put my mashed things like my mashed sweet potato or mashed potato because it's kind of more like a bowl. And then in these ones, they're a little bit longer, kind of more like a pinky, so I'll put our strips of food in here. And then I have two sets of these, which were both gifts. So I'm not exactly sure where to get these, but I'm sure you can find them online. Let's get packaging and labeling. excited to eat it all up. To recap, we have made a ton of food for Asa, who is doing baby lead weaning. We made apples, potatoes, yellow squash, zucchini, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, sweet potato mash with spinach and onion, onion, chickpeas, and mashed potatoes. This is going to be super helpful having all of this in the freezer. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like because it really helps support our channel and helps other people find our content. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more. We'll see you next time. Bye. Mwah.